Hello everyone, I wanted to show you what I've been doing in preparation for spring and I've uh, been doing lots of planting around the garden. I've uh, been planting catmint. I did earlier in the year plant others, but uh, or last year, but then I thought I must continue the border. So I've been creating a border. So when you come in to our yard, there's like a line, once they've established themselves, a line that will bring you into the garden. And so there's lots of catmints and one day that'll be fully established. And then I've uh, painted a wheel from an old rake wheel and I have got some roses there that eventually will grow over the top. And my favorite rose variety is David Austin. They grow the best. And this particular one that I'm putting in there is meant to be a climber. This one is supposed to be Shropshire Lad. And I say it's supposed to be because this rose here is uh, called Pinky and it once I had planted as a climber and it never climbed anywhere. <laughs> so don't, uh, you can only hope that your tags are always right. This one is meant to climb up and this pink one will stay small in the front. And I've uh, put a couple of little highlights of color in here because they just, this particular variety just absolutely loves staying in flower. In preparation for spring, during winter, in the middle of winter, I clip back all my roses. I usually do it over two days because it's quite a big job. My best friend in the clipping department is the hedge trimmer. I have a vine, a rose vine, and that's the thing that gets hedge trimmed. <laughs> but with regular roses, I'd use secateurs. I always say, no more garden beds, shouldn't do any more, but I did. I always make more. And so here along the path, we have for many years spoken about making another garden bed. And so I, this year with planting, I have put a variety of seeds that I've collected from my own garden as well as others. And I'll start up here. I've got lupins. That, do you want to point to the lupin, the Samuel? These are the lupins. These are mummy's lupins. I will give them the seeds. I have no idea what colour they'll be. So we'll find they out. look kind of like green Stars. Yes, and when it rains, what do they do? They have drops in them. Yeah, they hold the water, don't they? Yeah, in okay. That and so I've actually put yeah. these all plastic, just juice bottles in to cut over the top. Another. Oh, oh. Okay, good, Samuel. Um, I've uh, just got normal juice bottles and we cut the bottoms out. You can get from the nursery's proper little globes that go over. But I've uh, just done that and they made it little mini hot houses and they've worked out very well. Some I've left on because the plant's still a bit small. And I've got pansies here. I have a reason for my sticks, okay? I have a dog that likes to walk all over the garden and dig a little bit, but I also have carawongs that I call the naughty birds because they very much are good at digging up my new plants, pecking at my seeds, and as sticks are ugly in my garden, hopefully by the time the plants are really big, I can take them out. I have also got a variety of seeds in here that I've harvested mm. some from my garden. I've got... Uh, some Rebecca's. These are not from my garden, but uh, Iceland poppies. And you can see I've got little pansies along here, just as a bit of a border. And I've done, this one here will be baby blue eyes. So I've never ever planted that before, so I hope that goes really well. And I just basically scattered all the sorts of seeds and actually all of them have turned up. Sometimes you just don't know if any of them will come. I will have to, as I get a little bit bigger, space my little seedlings out because they're a bit too close together. We 
we'd like to have a little bit of winter colour because through winter it can turn quite drab. We don't have snow here, but everything sort of has a grey, dead look. <laughs> and so I've chosen these primulas. They're looking really lovely. And uh, some packs actually came with two in them for the price of one, so I did very well there. And uh, they are starting to lose their quality as the time goes on, but we've had them for quite a while now. Found uh, in the past, I have had them in my main gardens and they haven't done very well. And I found they did better in pots and a little bit sheltered out of the weather. In this garden bed, I tried to have a variety, but have some annuals and at the back here, tall plants. So I have planted hollyhocks and a light pink and sort of the black one, of which I have saved seed from. And I've got foxgloves that have just turned up everywhere. So they're really easy to move, I've found. And we've got lots of those. And uh, these ones are self-seeded little forget-me-nots. And I've got queen's lace, that's this one here. And so I've got little plants that have all come up really well there. And you might know the variety of pincushion scobius and it comes up with a dark red flower and that one dies down and comes back up again. And so I've got to get thousands of seeds of those. With this garden bed, originally there was one long piece along here, but we uh, altered our path with other constructions and so we've cut it in a little bit and redid the area. And so I've uh, in here got a gorgeous plum in the pot and it actually isn't a cement pot, even though it looks like it. Nice and light, easy to carry, plastic. I've got other little plants that are yet to establish themselves, but yet again, I have the stick in the garden because our dog decided it was a good cushion to sit on. And it is not, not in my time. And so we uh, have to keep doing that, but uh, we have a little azalea that was already there and is doing really well. Okay, I had other plants in this garden bed, but I decided they'd gone, you know, a bit woody with time, a bit old. And so I dug it all out and made a nice big mess. And then I've redid it with other plants. And so I've got lavender and some daisies that I've propagated from my garden, done very well. Some pansies and this one's called deep sea that I split a plant from and put there. thought I killed it, but it came back with life. And so uh, there's a few little plants that are just all be small shrubs. I have a variety of clematises and so I thought I should have a go at clipping them back. I, um, they're very easy to work with. I, you cut them quite short and and they actually do come back. Oh, and I didn't do this one up here. This one has just taken over really well and I thought I should leave that one. I did clip them back, but now that as time has gone on, they have grown and they're doing, as you can see, really, really well. I actually think better than before. And so they've decided to go straight to the sky and grab the clouds. <laughs> so I guided them with um, just, you know, garden string that blends in and I pulled them over a little bit and just gently, loosely tied them and guided them to weave through the wall. Okay, this garden bed has been here a long time and it had other plants in it, but they, the two big bushes that were here had gone woody with time and just needed refreshing. Okay, I planted some Nemesia and I, this was here already. It, it's a daisy like yellow daisy that will creep will come down here fill up the space i have a here and here two little roses that will grow you know to a dwarf a red dwarf variety it's called fairy dwarf and that's the same one up there more established and here already was veronica blue so i left a few little hints of that because this will eventually take over and um, where the sticks are, they're not just to keep the dog off now. They're actually my markers where I've put some bulbs in of gladioli, so they'll grow really tall. And I also have other bulbs in here on either side, a variety of liliums uh, bulbs to come up here. And I have uh, some yellow rebecchias that'll come up in here. They're self-seeded from here. And I have a variety of roses in here that I did, that were originally in here, but they were overgrown with other weeds. You know, like plants are just 
were taking over so I actually dug them out washed the roots and put them back and some people are not a fan of weed mat but I am <laughs> and so I made around here a little weed mat and a little bit of weed mat just around the roses and and anything else that creeps in won't matter and in time it'll all take off I've always had in garden beds and so I thought I would use some materials that we already had, the pavers and the pebbles and randomly dug up plants that were already laid out elsewhere and put them along here and so in time it all thicken up. The pebbles are here for a reason rather than wood chip is because we live in the bush and it lowers the fire risk. If you have a garden bed with all sorts of woody things or we'll say wood chip it is more combustible. Now this garden bed I'm creating is still in working progress as you can see. Some of the trees and shrubs here are very bigger, already been here for many years and I always wondered should I do something more with it and so the little plants were from other places around the property that I had just scattered but I thought were starting to look scrappy you know you get all grass everywhere so I thought oh, if we put it all in together and then I'll eventually have an edge along here it'll uh, I don't know just make it look really nice. called winter rose or hellebore and they normally have lots of big leaves but I actually like to clip all the big leaves back you will leave some but the major big leaves because they well it shows the plant better because you can see they mostly hang down and it actually seems to stimulate growth and make more flower I've noticed when I clip the bigger leaves away then more flowers come I look forward to spring to see how it all turns out and the, all the new growth and then lots of colors to come and all my seeds that have taken shoot to see them all in full flower.